this channel depicts fictional podcasts between dev and guests, welcome to a very special edition of our podcast, an interview with Albert Einstein. I'm your host, Dev, and today we have the incredible opportunity to sit down with one of the greatest scientific minds in history, the legendary physicist, Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein needs no introduction, but let me briefly remind you of his remarkable achievements. Born in Ulm, Germany in 1879, Einstein revolutionized our understanding of the universe with his groundbreaking theories of relativity, which forever changed the fields of physics and cosmology. His contributions have had a profound impact on our daily lives, from the development of nuclear energy to the GPS systems we rely on today. Today, we delve into the life and mind of this genius, uncovering his inspirations, challenges, and insights. Welcome, Mr. Einstein, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you for having me. It is always nice to talk to people who are interested in science and learning. Let's start with your early life. You were born in Germany in 1879. What was your childhood like? My childhood was fairly unremarkable. I was a curious child, always asking questions and trying to understand the world around me. I was particularly interested in mathematics and science, and I spent a lot of time reading books on those subjects. I also enjoyed playing the violin and building models of machines. You were known to be a curious child with a pangshang for questioning everything around you. How did this curiosity shape your journey as a scientist? Ever since I was a kid, I had a curious mind. I think curiosity is the most important thing for a scientist. It makes you wonder about things and look for answers. For instance, when I was young, I was fascinated by light and how it works. This curiosity led me to develop my revolutionary theory of relativity, where I showed that the speed of light is the same for everyone. That's truly remarkable, Mr. Einstein. Your theory of relativity revolutionized our understanding of space, time, and gravity. Can you elaborate on the concept of relativity and its implications for our daily lives? Sure thing. Let me tell you about relativity, which is basically the idea that physics works the same for everyone, no matter how fast or slow they are moving. This also means that some weird things can happen to time, space, and even mass when they are affected by gravity or speed. For instance, Time can slow down or speed up for different people depending on where they are or how fast they are going. This is not just a fantasy, but a real thing that has been tested and proven. For example, if you were on a spaceship traveling very fast, your clock would tick slower than a clock on Earth. Or if you were near a very massive object like a black hole, your clock would also tick slower than a clock far away from it. It also matters for things like GPS, which need to be very accurate with time to work properly. GPS satellites have to adjust their clocks to account for the effects of relativity, otherwise they would give wrong locations. Fascinating. It's incredible to think that such abstract concepts have tangible effects on our everyday lives. Moving on, Mr. Einstein, you once said, imagination is more important than knowledge. Can you shed some light on the role of imagination in scientific discovery? Yes, imagination is essential for scientific breakthroughs. Knowledge alone is not enough. Imagination allows us to see possibilities beyond the limits of current understanding. It helps us to create hypotheses, explore unknown areas, and develop new theories. Imagination, along with rigorous experimentation and mathematical logic, can reveal the mysteries of the universe. Without imagination, progress would be very slow. Mr. Einstein, can you share a memorable moment or experience that has had a significant impact on your journey as a scientist? Certainly. One of the most memorable moments in my scientific journey was the confirmation of the general theory of relativity through the observation of a solar eclipse in 1919. This momentous event took place during an expedition led by Sir Arthur Eddington to Principe and Sobral, where the total solar eclipse provided a unique opportunity to test the predictions of my theory. The general theory of relativity predicted that the gravitational field of a massive object, such as the Sun, would bend the path of light passing by it. This effect, known as gravitational lensing, 
would cause starlight to deviate from its expected trajectory as it passed near the sun. During the eclipse, Eddington and his team meticulously observed the positions of stars near the sun, both during the eclipse and when the sun was not obstructed. Their measurements indeed showed a slight shift in the apparent positions of these stars, consistent with the predictions of my theory. This confirmation of the general theory of relativity was a pivotal moment, as it provided empirical evidence that supported my revolutionary ideas. It demonstrated that the fabric of space and time could be warped by massive objects, validating the concept of gravitational curvature. This groundbreaking observation not only solidified my place in the scientific community but also opened up new avenues for our understanding of the cosmos. The news of the successful confirmation spread worldwide, capturing the attention and imagination of people everywhere. It was a thrilling and humbling experience to witness the world embracing these radical ideas and recognizing the profound implications they held for our understanding of the universe. This moment not only marked a significant milestone in my career but also highlighted the importance of experimental verification in science. The collaboration between theoretical predictions and observational evidence is essential to establish the validity of scientific theories and advance our understanding of the natural world. Mr. Einstein, could you share with us what inspired you throughout your scientific journey? Certainly. Inspiration for me came from various sources, both personal and intellectual. One of the earliest influences on my scientific curiosity was the gift of a compass when I was a young child. I was captivated by the mysterious force that made the needle point in a consistent direction. This simple object sparked my fascination with the hidden laws of nature and ignited a lifelong quest for understanding. As I grew older, I found inspiration in the works of great thinkers who came before me. The writings of Isaac Newton, James Clerk Maxwell, and Ernst Mach, among others, shaped my understanding of physics and provided a foundation for my own explorations. Their groundbreaking discoveries and profound insights inspired me to push the boundaries of knowledge and question established theories. Moreover, I found inspiration in the beauty and elegance of mathematics. The power of mathematics to describe and quantify the natural world fascinated me. It was through mathematics that I could unravel the secrets of the universe, uncovering the hidden patterns and underlying principles that govern the behavior of matter and energy. But perhaps one of the most significant sources of inspiration for me was the power of imagination. I believe that imagination played a fundamental role in scientific discovery. By envisioning thought experiments, engaging in visualizations, and allowing my mind to wander beyond the constraints of conventional thinking, I was able to formulate new theories and challenge prevailing assumptions. Mr. Einstein, how do you define success, and what does it mean to you personally? While achievements and accolades have their place, true success lies in the pursuit of one's passions and the satisfaction that comes from making a meaningful contribution to society. For me, success is intertwined with the joy of discovery, the satisfaction of unraveling the mysteries of the universe, and the ability to make a positive impact on the world. It is about pushing the boundaries of knowledge, challenging existing paradigms, and opening new doors of understanding. Success is not an endpoint but rather a continuous journey of growth, exploration, and intellectual fulfillment. On a personal level, success is about living a life guided by values that I hold dear, values of intellectual curiosity, integrity, and a commitment to the betterment of humanity. It is about striving to be true to oneself, remaining open to new ideas, and embracing the power of imagination and creativity. Furthermore, success, to me, is also deeply intertwined with the relationships I have formed throughout my life. Collaborating with brilliant minds, engaging in stimulating discussions, and exchanging ideas have enriched my own thinking and expanded the horizons of my understanding. The ability to inspire and positively impact others, to ignite their curiosity and spark their own pursuit of knowledge, is a measure of success that I hold dear. Ultimately, Success is a multifaceted concept that goes beyond individual achievements. It encompasses the pursuit of knowledge, the betterment of society, and the nurturing of personal growth. It is about leaving a lasting legacy that transcends time, 
inspiring future generations to continue the quest for understanding and the exploration of the unknown. Mr. Einstein, could you explain the theory of relativity in simple terms for our non-expert audience? Certainly. At its core, the theory of relativity is a framework that helps us understand how the laws of physics work when objects are moving at different speeds or in the presence of strong gravitational fields. The theory consists of two parts, the special theory of relativity and the general theory of relativity. Let's start with the special theory. The special theory of relativity, proposed by me in 1905, introduced two fundamental ideas. First, it stated that the laws of physics are the same for everyone, regardless of how fast they're moving. This means that the speed of light is constant and always remains the same for all observers, regardless of their motion. This idea challenged the common sense notion that time and space are fixed and absolute. The second idea is that time and space are interconnected, forming a four-dimensional framework called spacetime. It's like a fabric that can be curved or distorted by the presence of mass and energy. This brings us to the general theory of relativity. In the general theory of relativity, which I developed later, I realized that gravity is not a force like we traditionally think of it, but rather a consequence of the curvature of spacetime caused by massive objects. Think of it as if you place a heavy ball on a trampoline, causing it to create a dent or curvature in the fabric. Other objects nearby will roll towards it, not because of a force pulling them, but because they're following the curved path created by the dent. Similarly, massive objects like planets and stars create a curvature in spacetime, and smaller objects, like satellites or even light, move along the curved paths dictated by this curvature. This is why we observe the effects of gravity, such as the orbit of planets around the sun or the bending of light by massive objects like black holes. The theory of relativity has been extensively tested and confirmed through experiments and observations. It has far-reaching consequences, from understanding the behavior of high-speed particles to explaining the expansion of the universe. In simple terms, the theory of relativity revolutionized our understanding of how the universe works at its fundamental levels, challenging our intuition about time, space, and gravity. It has transformed the field of physics and continues to shape our knowledge of the cosmos. Mr. Einstein, your explanation of the theory of relativity has piqued my curiosity. In light of the theory's profound implications, I'm curious to know how the theory of relativity has influenced our understanding of the universe on a grand scale. Can you shed some light on this? Absolutely. The theory of relativity has had a transformative impact on our understanding of the universe, from the smallest particles to the vast cosmos. Let's explore a few key aspects. Space and time, the theory of relativity revolutionized our understanding of space and time. It showed that space and time are not separate and absolute entities but are interconnected in a four-dimensional framework known as spacetime. This realization has profound consequences for our understanding of the fabric of the universe. Gravity and the geometry of spacetime, the theory of general relativity redefined our understanding of gravity. It showed that gravity is not a force acting at a distance but is instead a consequence of the curvature of spacetime caused by mass and energy. This insight led to a new understanding of how massive objects like planets, stars, and black holes influence the paths of other objects, including light. The expansion of the universe, one of the most remarkable implications of general relativity is its prediction of the expanding universe. By applying the theory, Scientists have discovered that the fabric of spacetime itself is expanding, carrying galaxies away from each other. This discovery provided the foundation for the Big Bang theory, which describes the origin and evolution of the universe. Black holes, general relativity's predictions have also played a crucial role in our understanding of black holes. These incredibly dense objects result from the collapse of massive stars, creating a gravitational field so intense that nothing, not even light, can escape its grasp. General relativity has allowed us to study and comprehend the behavior of matter and energy near these cosmic phenomena. Time dilation and special relativity, 
the special theory of relativity has revolutionized our understanding of time itself. It showed that time is not absolute but is relative, meaning it can be experienced differently by different observers depending on their relative motion. This concept has been experimentally confirmed and has practical implications, such as the synchronization of clocks in GPS satellites. Mr. Einstein, we would like to delve into the challenges you encountered while formulating the theory of general relativity and how you overcame them. The journey to formulate the theory of general relativity was not without its share of challenges. One significant obstacle I faced was the complexity of the mathematics involved in describing the curvature of spacetime and its relationship with gravity. To develop the theory, I needed to create a set of equations that could accurately describe how matter and energy warp the fabric of spacetime, resulting in the force we perceive as gravity. This required me to delve into advanced mathematics and develop new mathematical tools to tackle the problem. The mathematics of tensor calculus, particularly the intricate field equations known as the Einstein field equations, played a pivotal role in describing the curvature of spacetime. However, these equations were highly complex and demanded an advanced understanding of mathematical concepts. Overcoming this challenge required not only deep mathematical insights but also collaboration with mathematicians and physicists who could help me navigate the complexities. I worked closely with my friend and mathematician Marcel Grossman, who had a deep understanding of the mathematics needed for the theory. Together, we tackled the intricate calculations and refined the mathematical framework. Another challenge I faced was the need to reconcile my theory with the existing body of experimental evidence and observations. This was particularly important in light of the well-established Newtonian theory of gravity, which had successfully described the motion of celestial bodies for centuries. To ensure the validity of my theory, I had to demonstrate that it not only reproduced the predictions of Newtonian gravity in the appropriate limits but also provided new insights and explained phenomena that Newtonian gravity could not account for. One crucial test for the theory was its ability to explain the anomalous precession of the orbit of the planet Mercury. The observations of Mercury's orbit deviated from what could be explained by Newtonian gravity alone. The theory of general relativity, with its ability to account for the curvature of spacetime, successfully explained this anomaly, providing a robust experimental validation of my theory. Another challenge was the need to communicate and convince the scientific community about the validity of my revolutionary ideas. The concept of spacetime curvature caused by matter and energy was a departure from conventional thinking, and it took time for the scientific community to fully grasp and accept the implications of the theory. To overcome this challenge, I presented my ideas through scientific papers and lectures, engaging in discussions and debates with fellow physicists. I welcomed criticism and scrutiny, as I believed that the strength of any theory lies in its ability to withstand rigorous examination. Gradually, as experimental evidence and observations supported the predictions of general relativity, the scientific community began to embrace the theory. The famous 1919 solar eclipse observations, which confirmed the bending of light around the sun as predicted by general relativity, provided a significant boost to the acceptance of the theory. Mr. Einstein, reflecting on the challenges you faced and overcame while formulating the theory of general relativity, I'm curious to know how these experiences shaped your approach to future scientific endeavors. How did your journey with general relativity influence your approach to tackling new scientific challenges? The challenges I encountered while formulating the theory of general relativity profoundly influenced my approach to future scientific endeavors. One of the key lessons I learned was the importance of persistence and the willingness to confront difficult problems head-on. The complex mathematics and conceptual intricacies of general relativity taught me the value of patience and the need to persevere when faced with daunting scientific puzzles. I realized that groundbreaking discoveries often require immense dedication and a willingness to explore uncharted territory. Additionally, the collaborative nature of my work on general relativity highlighted the significance of engaging with other brilliant minds. Collaborating with mathematicians, physicists, and fellow researchers enabled me to overcome the challenges I faced and refine my ideas. 
It taught me the importance of open dialogue, constructive criticism, and the power of collective knowledge. Furthermore, the process of presenting and defending my ideas to the scientific community deepened my understanding of the scientific method. It reinforced the importance of evidence-based reasoning, rigorous experimentation, and the need to subject theories to thorough scrutiny. This experience fostered a commitment to intellectual integrity and the pursuit of knowledge grounded in empirical evidence. Moreover, the success of the theory of general relativity provided me with the confidence to tackle new scientific challenges with a sense of audacity and imagination. It taught me the value of thinking outside the box, questioning conventional wisdom, and embracing innovative approaches to problem-solving. Mr. Einstein, as we reflect on your remarkable career, I'm curious to know if there is anything you would have done differently or focused on more if given the opportunity. Ah, an interesting question indeed. When looking back on my career, there are a few aspects that I might have approached differently or emphasized more. One aspect I would have focused on more is the importance of collaboration and interdisciplinary research. While I did engage in collaborations throughout my career, particularly during the formulation of the theory of general relativity, I believe I could have sought out even more opportunities to work closely with scientists from various fields. Collaboration allows for the exchange of diverse perspectives and expertise, fostering new insights and breakthroughs. Embracing interdisciplinary research early on could have led to even more groundbreaking discoveries. Additionally, I might have explored the field of quantum mechanics in greater depth. Although I made significant contributions to the development of quantum theory, I had some reservations about its probabilistic nature and philosophical implications. In retrospect, delving further into quantum mechanics and actively participating in the ongoing debates and advancements in the field could have further enriched my understanding of the quantum world and potentially led to further breakthroughs. Furthermore, I would have dedicated more time to nurturing and mentoring the next generation of scientists. Throughout my career, I was fortunate to have supportive mentors and colleagues who guided me and stimulated my intellectual growth. I believe that actively fostering the development of young minds is crucial for the progress of science and the cultivation of future scientific leaders. I would have eagerly taken on a more prominent role in mentoring aspiring scientists, inspiring their curiosity, and encouraging their pursuit of knowledge. Lastly, I would have paid more attention to the societal implications and applications of scientific discoveries. Science has the potential to shape our world in profound ways, and as scientists, it is essential for us to consider the ethical and societal dimensions of our work. Exploring the ethical implications and engaging in discussions about responsible scientific progress could have contributed to a more thoughtful and mindful approach to scientific advancements. While these are reflections on aspects I might have approached differently, I must say that I am grateful for the opportunities and experiences I had throughout my career. Every decision and choice I made played a role in shaping the scientific contributions I am known for today. Mr. Einstein, thank you for sharing your reflections on your career and the aspects you might have approached differently. Building upon your mention of interdisciplinary research, I'm curious to know how you believe collaboration between different scientific fields can lead to new insights and advancements. Could you elaborate on the benefits of interdisciplinary collaboration in scientific research? Certainly. Interdisciplinary collaboration has immense potential for driving new insights and advancements in scientific research. When scientists from different fields come together to tackle complex problems, their diverse perspectives and expertise can spark innovative approaches and shed light on previously unexplored avenues of inquiry. One key benefit of interdisciplinary collaboration is the ability to combine knowledge and methodologies from multiple disciplines. Each field brings its own unique set of tools, theories, and techniques. By integrating these diverse approaches, researchers can tackle complex problems from multiple angles, leading to a more comprehensive understanding of the phenomena under investigation. Mr. Einstein, we would love to learn more about your thought process and the inspiration behind your famous equation, E equals mc squared. Could you share with us how you arrived at this groundbreaking equation and the ideas that influenced its development? Certainly. 
The equation E equals mc squared, which relates energy, E, to mass, m, and the speed of light, c, squared, was the result of my deep contemplation on the fundamental nature of energy and mass. At the time, the prevailing understanding was based on Newtonian physics, which treated energy and mass as separate and distinct entities. However, my investigations into the theory of special relativity revealed a profound connection between the two. The key insight came from my exploration of the constancy of the speed of light. According to the theory of special relativity, the speed of light in a vacuum is constant for all observers, regardless of their relative motion. This constancy challenged traditional notions of space and time and led me to re-examine the relationship between energy and mass. Through extensive thought experiments and mathematical derivations, I discovered that energy and mass are not independent but deeply intertwined. The equation E equals mc squared emerged as a powerful expression of this relationship. Essentially, the equation states that energy is equal to the mass of an object multiplied by the speed of light squared. It implies that mass can be converted into energy and vice versa. This concept, known as mass-energy equivalence, revolutionized our understanding of the fundamental nature of matter and energy. The inspiration behind this equation came from a desire to reconcile the seemingly separate domains of energy and mass and to uncover a deeper unity in the physical world. It was driven by my curiosity to explore the profound implications of the theory of special relativity and to provide a mathematical framework that could describe the interplay between mass and energy. Furthermore, the equation E equals mc squared opened up new possibilities in the realm of nuclear physics. It laid the foundation for understanding the incredible amounts of energy released in nuclear reactions, such as those that occur in the sun or in the development of atomic weapons. The equation showcased the immense potential of harnessing the energy locked within the atomic nucleus. Mr. Einstein, there is a topic that has garnered significant attention and curiosity over the years regarding your involvement in the discovery of the atomic bomb. Could you shed some light on your connection to this momentous scientific achievement? While it is true that I played a role in the development of the atomic bomb, I must clarify that I was not directly involved in its discovery or its practical realization. My contribution was primarily theoretical and indirect. In 1939, after the discovery of nuclear fission by Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann, it became clear that the release of immense amounts of energy could be achieved through the splitting of atomic nuclei. This discovery prompted concerns about the potential military applications of this newfound knowledge. At the time, I was approached by a group of scientists who were aware of my work on the theory of relativity and the equation E equals mc squared. They sought my support in sending a letter to President Franklin D. Roosevelt, urging the United States to prioritize research on atomic weapons due to the potential threat posed by Nazi Germany. Together with physicist Leo Szilard, I drafted a letter that outlined the theoretical feasibility of atomic weapons and the urgent need for American efforts in this field. The letter, known as the einstein sillard letter, was delivered to President Roosevelt in 1939 and is considered a catalyst for the establishment of the Manhattan Project, the American research initiative that ultimately led to the development of the atomic bomb. However, it is important to note that my intention in writing the letter was not to advocate for the creation of a devastating weapon. Rather, it was motivated by the genuine concern that Nazi Germany might develop atomic weapons first, leading to an imbalance of power with potentially catastrophic consequences. In hindsight, I have expressed regret for my role in the atomic bomb's development. As the destructive power of this weapon became evident with the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, I realized the tremendous responsibility that comes with scientific advancements. I became an advocate for peaceful uses of atomic energy and nuclear disarmament, working to promote international cooperation and prevent the further proliferation of nuclear weapons. Building upon this discussion, I would like to delve further into your advocacy for peaceful uses of atomic energy and nuclear disarmament. Can you elaborate on the actions you took and the initiatives you supported to promote international cooperation and prevent the proliferation of nuclear weapons? Certainly. 
In the aftermath of World War II and the use of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, I became increasingly committed to promoting international cooperation and preventing the further spread of nuclear weapons. I recognized the urgent need for disarmament and the responsible management of atomic energy for peaceful purposes. To address these concerns, I actively engaged in various initiatives and organizations that aimed to advance nuclear disarmament and foster international cooperation. One notable effort was the establishment of the Emergency Committee of Atomic Scientists in 1946, which I co-founded with other prominent scientists. This committee sought to raise public awareness about the dangers of nuclear weapons and advocate for global disarmament. I also lent my support to the Pugwash Conferences on Science and World Affairs, an international forum that brought together scientists from different countries to discuss global security and disarmament. The Pugwash movement played a significant role in fostering dialogue and encouraging cooperative solutions to the nuclear arms race. Furthermore, I used my platform and influence to advocate for peaceful uses of atomic energy. I emphasized the importance of using atomic energy for the benefit of humanity, such as in the fields of medicine, agriculture, and energy production. I believe that harnessing the potential of atomic energy for peaceful purposes could contribute to the betterment of society and alleviate global issues. In addition to these efforts, I consistently voiced my concerns about the risks of nuclear weapons and the need for international agreements to control their proliferation. I actively called for the establishment of international bodies and treaties to monitor and regulate nuclear activities. One such example was my support for the creation of the United Nations International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, which aimed to promote the peaceful use of nuclear energy and prevent its misuse for military purposes. Throughout my life, I remained dedicated to advocating for nuclear disarmament and peaceful cooperation among nations. I firmly believed that the destructive power of nuclear weapons posed an existential threat to humanity, and it was imperative for nations to work together to prevent their use and proliferation. Mr. Einstein, we would like to delve into an intriguing aspect of your early career. Could you share with us your experience as a patent examiner at the Swiss Patent Office and how this role influenced your scientific journey? My time as a patent examiner at the Swiss Patent Office had a significant impact on my scientific career. It provided me with a unique perspective and a deep understanding of the practical application of scientific principles. During my employment at the Patent Office from 1902 to 1909, my responsibilities involved evaluating patent applications and assessing the novelty and inventiveness of various technological inventions. This work exposed me to a wide range of scientific and engineering ideas, spanning from mechanical devices to electrical systems. Engaging with a diverse array of inventions allowed me to explore different fields of science and technology. It sharpened my analytical skills and honed my ability to think critically about scientific concepts. It also provided me with a broad knowledge base that served as a foundation for my later groundbreaking work. While examining patents, I often encountered innovative ideas and witnessed the application of scientific principles in practical contexts. This exposure fueled my curiosity and deepened my appreciation for the transformative potential of scientific research. It instilled in me a desire to contribute to the scientific community by pushing the boundaries of knowledge and developing new theories. Additionally, my experiences at the Patent Office heightened my awareness of the limitations and shortcomings of existing scientific theories. I began to question conventional wisdom and embarked on my own intellectual journey to challenge established beliefs. Working at the Patent Office also afforded me the opportunity to interact with inventors, engineers, and scientists from various disciplines. These interactions provided valuable insights into the collaborative nature of scientific progress and the importance of interdisciplinary approaches. It further emphasized the significance of exchanging ideas and knowledge across different fields of study. One memorable moment occurred when I was examining a patent application for a device related to the synchronization of timekeeping in train stations. As I reviewed the application, I realized that the concept could be expanded beyond train stations and applied to synchronize clocks in different locations. 
This sparked my interest in the nature of time and its measurement, which eventually became a central theme in my scientific explorations. Another interesting experience involved a patent application for a new type of electric motor. The design was inventive and efficient, but it also presented certain technical challenges. As I evaluated the application, I found myself engrossed in devising potential solutions to overcome these challenges. This experience ignited my passion for understanding the underlying principles of electromagnetism and laid the groundwork for my later contributions to the field of theoretical physics. One anecdote that stands out involves a peculiar invention for a device that claimed to generate perpetual motion, which is the concept of a machine that can operate indefinitely without an external energy source. As an examiner, it was my duty to critically evaluate the invention's claims and assess its scientific validity. Through careful analysis, I discovered that the proposed perpetual motion machine violated the fundamental laws of thermodynamics, which govern energy conservation. This experience reinforced my understanding of the importance of scientific principles and the need to critically evaluate extraordinary claims. Mr. Einstein, we would like to learn more about the circumstances surrounding your appointment as a professor, first at the University of Zurich and later at the University of Berlin. Could you describe the events and factors that led to these significant milestones in your career? The circumstances surrounding my appointments as a professor at the University of Zurich and later at the University of Berlin were influenced by a combination of factors, including my academic achievements, professional connections, and the recognition of my scientific contributions. My journey began in 1901 when I graduated from the Swiss Federal Polytechnic in Zurich. After completing my studies, I faced challenges in securing a suitable academic position due to a lack of strong recommendations and connections in the academic community. Despite this, I remained persistent in pursuing my passion for scientific research. In 1902, an opportunity arose when a former classmate and friend, Marcel Grossman, recommended me for a position as a technical expert in the Swiss Patent Office in Bern. This position provided me with stability and a modest income, allowing me to continue my research independently. During my time at the patent office, I worked diligently on developing my scientific ideas and publishing groundbreaking papers. In 1909, my efforts paid off when I was appointed as an associate professor at the University of Zurich. This appointment was a significant milestone in my career, as it provided me with a platform to engage with students, collaborate with colleagues, and further expand my research. The appointment was based on the recognition of my scientific contributions, particularly my work on the theory of relativity and the photoelectric effect. As my reputation grew, I received numerous invitations and offers from prestigious institutions around the world. In 1914, I accepted a professorship at the University of Berlin and became the director of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute for Physics. The invitation came at a time when Germany was emerging as a leading center for scientific research and provided me with access to state-of-the-art facilities and a vibrant intellectual environment. My time at the University of Berlin marked a significant phase in my scientific career. I collaborated with renowned scientists, delivered influential lectures, and continued to push the boundaries of knowledge in theoretical physics. It was during this period that I developed my groundbreaking theory of general relativity, which revolutionized our understanding of gravity and the fabric of the universe. Mr. Einstein, we would like to explore the impact of the rise of the Nazi regime in Germany on your personal and professional life. Could you share how this tumultuous period influenced your decision to leave the country and the circumstances surrounding your departure? Certainly. The rise of the Nazi regime in Germany had a profound impact on both my personal and professional life. As a prominent figure of Jewish heritage and an outspoken critic of the regime, I faced increasing persecution and threats that compelled me to make the difficult decision to leave the country. The Nazis' ascent to power in the early 1930s marked a significant shift in the political climate. The regime's policies and ideologies clashed with my own values of tolerance, freedom, and scientific pursuit. Antisemitism became increasingly prevalent, and intellectuals, including myself, faced discrimination and targeted attacks. 
In 1933, when Adolf Hitler assumed power as Chancellor of Germany, the situation deteriorated rapidly. As a result of the Nazis' anti-Semitic policies, my position as a professor and my involvement in scientific institutions became untenable. The regime's campaign against Jewish science further undermined my ability to conduct research and collaborate with colleagues in Germany. Recognizing the dangers and restrictions imposed by the Nazi regime, I made the difficult decision to leave Germany. In March 1933, shortly after Hitler's appointment, I resigned from my position at the University of Berlin and renounced my German citizenship. With the help of colleagues and friends, I sought refuge in other countries, eventually finding sanctuary in the United States. Here, I continued my scientific work and joined the faculty of the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey. Leaving Germany was a deeply emotional and challenging experience for me. It meant leaving behind my home, my colleagues, and my intellectual community. However, it was a necessary step to ensure my personal safety and the freedom to continue my scientific pursuits without fear of persecution. The decision to leave Germany was not only a personal one but also had far-reaching implications for my career. It allowed me to continue my research in a supportive academic environment and provided me with the opportunity to collaborate with esteemed scientists from around the world. Mr. Einstein, we would like to delve into the challenging period of World War II and the Holocaust and its impact on you as a Jewish scientist. Could you share your experiences, the challenges you faced, and the broader implications for the scientific community during those tumultuous times? The period of World War II and the Holocaust was an incredibly challenging and tragic time, not only for me personally but also for the entire world. As a Jewish scientist, I faced specific difficulties and witnessed the devastating consequences of the Holocaust firsthand. During this time, anti-Semitism and racial persecution were pervasive. Jewish intellectuals, including scientists, were targeted and subjected to discrimination, exclusion, and even imprisonment or death. The Nazi regime sought to eradicate Jewish influence from all aspects of society, including the scientific community. For me, the challenges were twofold. First, there were personal threats to my safety and well-being. My Jewish heritage made me a prime target for persecution, and I received numerous death threats and hateful messages. These circumstances forced me to take extensive security measures and live under constant fear for my life. Second, there were significant limitations placed on my ability to continue my scientific work. Many of my colleagues and friends, who were also Jewish scientists, faced similar restrictions and were forced to flee or go into hiding. The scientific institutions in Germany, which were once at the forefront of research and innovation, were now being dismantled or influenced by Nazi ideology. The broader implications for the scientific community were profound. Many Jewish scientists, who had made substantial contributions to their fields, were driven out of Germany and other countries affected by the Holocaust. This led to a significant brain drain, with talented individuals forced to leave their research projects and abandon their laboratories. Mr. Einstein, as we explore the influences and inspirations in your scientific journey, we are curious to know if there is a scientist whom you have learned from or admired throughout your illustrious career. Could you share the name of a scientist who has left a lasting impression on you, and what specific qualities or contributions made them stand out? There have been many scientists whose work and contributions have greatly influenced me throughout my career. If I were to single out one individual, it would be Isaac Newton. Newton's profound insights and groundbreaking discoveries in physics and mathematics laid the foundation for much of modern science. What stands out to me about Newton is not only his remarkable intellect but also his ability to integrate different fields of study and formulate laws that unified our understanding of the physical world. His monumental work, such as the laws of motion and the law of universal gravitation, transformed our perception of the universe and established the principles of classical physics. Newton's emphasis on rigorous experimentation and mathematical analysis was truly groundbreaking. His Principia Mathematica, in which he articulated these fundamental laws, exemplified his meticulous approach to scientific inquiry. 
It inspired me to strive for clarity, precision, and logical reasoning in my own scientific endeavors. Moreover, Newton's relentless pursuit of knowledge and his dedication to uncovering the underlying principles of nature resonated deeply with me. His commitment to unraveling the mysteries of the universe, regardless of the obstacles he faced, serves as an enduring example of scientific passion and curiosity. While my own theories and discoveries built upon and extended Newton's work, I have always held a deep admiration for his profound contributions to science. Newton's legacy serves as a constant reminder of the transformative power of scientific inquiry and the enduring impact of a single individual's insights. Mr. Einstein, building upon our discussion about Isaac Newton, we would like to explore the specific qualities or traits that you believe make him exceptional in the field of science. Could you elaborate on the characteristics or attributes that you find remarkable about Newton, and how they have contributed to his exceptional status in the scientific community? Certainly. Isaac Newton possessed several exceptional qualities and traits that set him apart in the field of science. Allow me to highlight a few that I find particularly noteworthy. First and foremost, Newton's unparalleled intellectual capacity and ingenuity were truly exceptional. His ability to grasp complex mathematical concepts and apply them to the study of nature was remarkable. Newton had an innate talent for developing new mathematical methods and tools to tackle the scientific questions of his time. His invention of calculus, for instance, revolutionized mathematical analysis and provided a powerful framework for studying change and motion. Secondly, Newton's unwavering dedication to rigorous experimentation and empirical observation greatly distinguished him. He meticulously designed experiments and carefully analyzed the data to derive his laws and principles. Newton's insistence on grounding his theories in empirical evidence and his commitment to the scientific method helped establish a solid foundation for scientific inquiry. Another notable trait of Newton was his exceptional ability to integrate different fields of study and connect seemingly unrelated phenomena. By synthesizing knowledge from physics, mathematics, and astronomy, Newton was able to formulate universal laws that elegantly explained the workings of the natural world. His ability to unify diverse areas of study was a hallmark of his genius and paved the way for future scientific breakthroughs. Mr. Einstein it's fascinating to learn about your participation in the renowned Solvay conferences where eminent scientists gathered to discuss and debate the latest developments in physics. We would love to hear more about your experiences, particularly during the fifth Solvay conference in 1927, where you found yourself engaged in intense debates with fellow scientists, including Niels Bohr, regarding the nature of quantum mechanics. Could you share some insights into these debates and the challenges you faced during that time? The Solvay Conferences were prestigious gatherings that brought together some of the brightest minds in physics. They provided an invaluable platform for exchanging ideas and debating the forefront of scientific discoveries. The Fifth Solvay Conference, held in 1927, stands out as a significant event in my career due to the heated debates surrounding the emerging field of quantum mechanics. At that time, the revolutionary theory of quantum mechanics, with its probabilistic nature and inherent uncertainty, was gaining prominence. However, I held reservations about the completeness and philosophical implications of this theory. I engaged in intense discussions and debates with other prominent physicists, most notably Niels Bohr, who was a strong advocate for quantum mechanics. These debates were marked by a clash of viewpoints and divergent interpretations of the theory. I raised concerns about the indeterminacy and randomness implied by quantum mechanics, famously stating that, God does not play dice with the universe. I questioned whether quantum mechanics provided a complete description of physical reality or if there were underlying hidden variables yet to be discovered. My viewpoints faced significant opposition and criticism from many of my esteemed colleagues. The debates were intense and passionate, as we grappled with the profound implications of quantum mechanics and its compatibility with our fundamental understanding of the laws of nature. Mr. Einstein, our audience is eager to gain a better understanding of the theory of quantum mechanics that was at the center of the debates you participated in during the Solvay conferences. 
Could you please explain this complex theory in simpler terms for our non-expert listeners? Certainly. Quantum mechanics is a fundamental theory in physics that describes the behavior of particles at the smallest scales, such as atoms and subatomic particles. It revolutionized our understanding of the physical world by introducing a new set of principles that challenged classical physics. One of the key ideas in quantum mechanics is the concept of quantization, which means that certain properties of particles, like energy and momentum, can only take on specific discrete values rather than any arbitrary value. This departure from classical physics, where quantities can vary continuously, was a major shift in our understanding. Another important aspect of quantum mechanics is the wave-particle duality. It suggests that particles, such as electrons or photons, can exhibit both wave-like and particle-like behavior depending on how they are observed or measured. This duality is quite different from our everyday experience, where objects are either clearly particles or waves. Additionally, quantum mechanics introduced the notion of uncertainty or indeterminacy. It states that there are inherent limits to what we can know about certain pairs of properties of a particle, such as its position and momentum, with high precision at the same time. This uncertainty principle highlights the intrinsic probabilistic nature of the quantum world. Furthermore, quantum mechanics introduced the idea of superposition, where particles can exist in multiple states simultaneously. For example, an electron can be in a superposition of being both spin up and spin down until it is observed or measured, at which point it collapses into one definite state. The theory also involves the concept of entanglement, where two or more particles become intertwined in such a way that the state of one particle is directly connected to the state of another, regardless of the distance between them. This phenomenon has been experimentally verified and has profound implications for information and communication. While quantum mechanics is highly successful in explaining the behavior of particles at the microscopic level, it can be challenging to reconcile with our macroscopic, classical understanding of the world. This tension and the philosophical questions it raises were at the heart of the debates during the Solvay Conference. Mr. Einstein, let's delve into your quest for unifying the fundamental forces of nature. Could you share how you approach the challenges of this endeavor and whether you believe that a theory of everything, a unified theory that encompasses all fundamental forces, is achievable? The unification of the fundamental forces of nature was a central goal in my scientific endeavors. I was driven by the belief that there must exist a deeper underlying unity in the universe, where all the fundamental forces can be described by a single comprehensive theory. In my pursuit of unification, I focused on developing a theory that would encompass both gravity and electromagnetism. The general theory of relativity, which I formulated, provided a profound understanding of gravity as the curvature of spacetime. It successfully explained the motion of celestial bodies and the behavior of massive objects on both cosmic and everyday scales. However, unifying gravity with electromagnetism proved to be a formidable challenge. Electromagnetism, described by James Clerk Maxwell's equations, governs the interactions of electric and magnetic fields. Despite my efforts, I was unable to find a satisfactory theory that unified these two forces during my lifetime. Nevertheless, my work laid the foundation for future researchers to explore the unification of forces. Subsequent physicists, such as the brilliant minds of the 20th century, have made significant strides in unifying electromagnetism with the weak nuclear force, resulting in the electroweak theory. As for the unification of all fundamental forces, including the strong nuclear force, the quest continues. Theoretical physicists have proposed various approaches, such as string theory and quantum field theory, to seek a unified theory of everything. These theories attempt to reconcile gravity with the other forces by introducing additional dimensions and new mathematical frameworks. However, whether a complete theory of everything is ultimately achievable remains an open question. The nature of the universe is intricate, and there may be complexities and limitations that challenge our ability to find a single unified theory. It is also possible that a theory of everything may require new conceptual breakthroughs or empirical evidence that is yet to be discovered.
Mr. Einstein, you introduced the concept of space-time curvature in your general theory of relativity, which revolutionized our understanding of gravity and the structure of the universe. Could you please elaborate on the idea of space-time curvature and its implications? In the general theory of relativity, I proposed a new way of understanding gravity by considering the geometry of space and time, which I referred to as space-time. According to this theory, the presence of matter and energy in the universe causes space-time to curve or bend. To illustrate this concept, imagine placing a heavy object, such as a planet or a star, on a flat rubber sheet. The object will cause the sheet to deform, creating a curvature around it. Now, if you roll a smaller object, like a marble, on the rubber sheet, it will follow a curved path, influenced by the curvature created by the heavier object. This bending of the rubber sheet represents the curvature of spacetime caused by the presence of mass. In a similar manner, massive objects like planets, stars, and even galaxies create a curvature in the fabric of spacetime. The extent of this curvature depends on the distribution and amount of matter and energy present. Objects moving within this curved spacetime will experience a force that we perceive as gravity. The more massive an object, the stronger the curvature it produces and the greater the gravitational force it exerts. The implications of spacetime curvature are profound. It explains how the force of gravity operates not through a direct interaction between objects, as in Newton's theory, but rather as a consequence of the curvature of spacetime caused by mass and energy. This new understanding allows for a more comprehensive explanation of gravitational phenomena. Mr. Einstein, our audience is eager to hear your thoughts on the concept of black holes and their role in the universe. Could you please discuss their formation, properties, and potential connections to the nature of space and time? Black holes are fascinating objects predicted by my general theory of relativity. They are regions in space where gravity is so intense that nothing, not even light, can escape their gravitational pull. Understanding black holes requires exploring their formation, properties, and their profound implications for our understanding of space, time, and the universe. Black holes are formed through the gravitational collapse of massive stars. When a massive star exhausts its nuclear fuel, the force of gravity overwhelms the outward pressure generated by nuclear reactions, causing the star to collapse inward. If the mass of the collapsing core exceeds a critical threshold, known as the Chandrasekhar limit, it continues collapsing into a singularity, a point of infinite density at the center. This singularity is surrounded by an event horizon, a boundary beyond which nothing can escape. The properties of black holes are extraordinary. One key property is their immense gravitational pull, which distorts space and time in their vicinity. This phenomenon, known as gravitational time dilation, causes time to slow down near a black hole compared to regions further away. It also leads to gravitational lensing, where the path of light is bent as it passes near a black hole. Black holes are characterized by their mass, charge, and angular momentum. These properties determine their size and influence the curvature of spacetime in their vicinity. The more massive a black hole, the stronger its gravitational pull and the larger its event horizon. Black holes have significant implications for our understanding of space, time, and the universe. They challenge our classical understanding of physics and provide a testing ground for the limits of our current theories. Studying black holes can lead to insights into the nature of spacetime, the behavior of matter under extreme conditions, and the interplay between quantum mechanics and gravity. Mr. Einstein, our audience is curious to know how you predicted the existence of black holes and their roles in the universe. Could you please explain your contributions in this regard? While I did not directly predict the existence of black holes, my general theory of relativity provided the theoretical framework that allowed for their prediction and understanding. In my theory, I described gravity as the curvature of space and time caused by the presence of mass and energy. Through the mathematical equations of general relativity, I realized that under certain conditions, massive objects could collapse under their own gravity, forming regions of extreme curvature known as singularities. These singularities would be hidden behind an event horizon, 
a boundary beyond which nothing could escape. While I initially found the concept of black holes difficult to accept, my equations indicated their possibility. However, it wasn't until later that astronomers and physicists, building upon my work, began to seriously explore the existence and properties of black holes. In the 20th century, astronomers started observing celestial objects exhibiting peculiar behaviors, such as intense gravitational pull and the emission of powerful radiation jets. These observations were consistent with the presence of black holes. Over time, through advancements in observational techniques and theoretical understanding, the evidence for the existence of black holes grew stronger. Black holes play significant roles in the universe. They have profound effects on their surroundings and influence the dynamics of galaxies and star clusters. They can capture nearby matter, causing it to spiral inwards and release tremendous amounts of energy. This energy can manifest as high-energy radiation, jets of particles, and even distortions in the fabric of spacetime. Black holes also have implications for our understanding of fundamental physics. They provide a unique environment to study extreme conditions, where the laws of physics as we currently understand them may break down. The study of black holes has deepened our understanding of gravity, the nature of space and time, and the interplay between gravity and quantum mechanics. More about the cosmological constant and its significance in shaping our understanding of the expansion and evolution of the universe. Could you please elaborate on this concept and its implications? The cosmological constant is a term that I introduced in my equations of general relativity to account for a repulsive force that counteracts the gravitational attraction between matter. It represents a constant energy density that permeates all of space, causing a repulsive effect on cosmic scales. At the time, I introduced the cosmological constant to achieve a static universe, as it balanced the attractive force of gravity, preventing the collapse or expansion of the universe. However, when Edwin Hubble's observations in the 1920s demonstrated that the universe was actually expanding, I famously referred to the introduction of the cosmological constant as my greatest blunder. In the modern context, the cosmological constant has gained renewed importance in our understanding of the expansion and evolution of the universe. It is now associated with dark energy, a mysterious form of energy that permeates space and drives the accelerated expansion of the universe. The cosmological constant, or dark energy, is believed to contribute to the overall energy budget of the universe, alongside matter and radiation. It acts as a repulsive force that counteracts the attractive force of gravity, causing the expansion of the universe to accelerate over time. This discovery has had profound implications for cosmology. It suggests that the expansion of the universe is not only continuing but also accelerating, which challenges our previous expectations of a decelerating expansion due to the gravitational pull of matter. The presence of dark energy, represented by the cosmological constant, provides a new framework for understanding the dynamics and fate of our universe. Moreover, the cosmological constant and dark energy raise fundamental questions about the nature of space, time, and the universe. They push us to reconsider the nature of empty space, as it appears to possess inherent energy. The precise origin and composition of dark energy remain areas of active research, and scientists are working to unravel its mysteries. Mr. Einstein, could you please share your thoughts on this mysterious substance dark matter and its significance in our understanding of the universe? Dark matter is an intriguing concept that has emerged in the study of the universe. It refers to a hypothetical form of matter that does not emit, absorb, or reflect light or any other electromagnetic radiation. Its presence is inferred through its gravitational effects on visible matter and the large-scale structure of the cosmos. When I developed the theory of general relativity, I did not account for the existence of dark matter. My equations were based on the assumption that the visible matter in the universe was the primary source of gravity. However, as our understanding of the universe deepened, it became apparent that the observed motions of galaxies and the distribution of matter could not be explained solely by the visible matter we can see. The existence of dark matter was proposed to reconcile these observations. 
It is believed to make up a significant portion of the matter in the universe, far surpassing the amount of visible matter. The gravitational effects of dark matter are thought to influence the formation and dynamics of galaxies and galaxy clusters. Despite its elusive nature, dark matter plays a crucial role in shaping the structure of the universe. Its gravitational pull provides the scaffolding around which galaxies and other cosmic structures form and evolve. Without dark matter, galaxies would not have enough mass to hold themselves together, and the universe would look very different. While the precise nature of dark matter remains unknown, scientists have proposed various hypotheses. Some suggest that dark matter consists of yet-to-be-discovered particles, such as weakly interacting massive particles, WIMPs, or axions, which interact only weakly with normal matter and electromagnetic radiation. Others have explored alternative theories that modify our understanding of gravity itself, such as modifications to general relativity on large scales. The search for dark matter is an active area of research, employing a variety of techniques, including particle accelerators, underground detectors, and astronomical observations. Scientists are working diligently to unravel the mystery of dark matter and its role in the cosmos. Mr. Einstein, our audience is fascinated by the concept of time travel and would like to hear your thoughts on this intriguing topic. How do you approach the idea of time travel, and do you believe it is theoretically possible within the framework of our current scientific understanding? Time travel is a captivating concept that has captivated the human imagination for centuries. In the realm of physics, it involves the ability to move backward or forward in time, defying the conventional flow of time as we experience it in our daily lives. Within the framework of my theory of relativity, the possibility of time travel is an intriguing topic. According to my theory, space and time are intricately linked, forming a four-dimensional fabric known as spacetime. The presence of matter and energy causes spacetime to curve, influencing the motion of objects within it. While my theory allows for certain intriguing phenomena, such as time dilation, where time can pass at different rates for objects moving at different speeds or in the presence of strong gravitational fields, it does not provide a clear pathway for traversing time in a way that would enable traditional time travel as portrayed in science fiction. From a theoretical standpoint, various ideas and possibilities have been explored within the realm of quantum mechanics and general relativity. Concepts such as wormholes, which are hypothetical shortcuts through spacetime, have been theorized as potential means for traversing vast distances and, in some interpretations, potentially enabling time travel. However, the realization of such concepts requires the existence of exotic forms of matter and energy that have not yet been observed or understood. It is important to note that the question of time travel remains an active area of scientific investigation, and researchers are continually exploring the boundaries of our current understanding. As of now, within the framework of our knowledge, there is no conclusive evidence or consensus on the feasibility of time travel. Mr. Einstein, our audience is curious about your thoughts on the dual nature of light as both a particle and a wave. Could you please share your insights on this topic and how this understanding contributed to your theories and equations? The dual nature of light as both a particle and a wave was a revolutionary concept that had profound implications for our understanding of the nature of light and the foundations of physics. In the late 19th century, the prevailing understanding of light was based on the wave theory proposed by scientists like James Clerk Maxwell. According to this theory, light was believed to be a form of electromagnetic radiation that propagated through space as waves. However, in the early 20th century, experimental evidence began to emerge that challenged this wave-based understanding. The phenomenon of the photoelectric effect, for instance, demonstrated that light could exhibit particle-like behavior. It was observed that when light shone on certain materials, it could eject electrons, as if light consisted of discrete particles of energy. This led me to propose the concept of light quanta, which later came to be known as photons. I suggested that light could exhibit both wave-like and particle-like properties, depending on the experimental context. This idea laid the foundation for the field of quantum mechanics, which revolutionized our understanding of the microscopic world. 
Mr. Einstein, role of mathematics in understanding the laws of physics and its ability to accurately describe and predict natural phenomena. Could you please share your insights on this topic? Mathematics plays a fundamental role in our understanding of the laws of physics and their ability to accurately describe and predict natural phenomena. It is through the language of mathematics that we can express and quantify the relationships between physical quantities and the underlying principles that govern the universe. Physics seeks to uncover the fundamental laws that govern the behavior of the natural world. These laws are often expressed through mathematical equations and formulas. Mathematics provides us with a precise and concise framework to describe complex physical phenomena and formulate theories that can be rigorously tested. The beauty of mathematics lies in its ability to provide a universal language that transcends cultural and linguistic boundaries. It allows scientists from different backgrounds and cultures to communicate and collaborate in their pursuit of knowledge. Mathematics provides a common ground for scientists to build upon the work of their predecessors and expand our understanding of the natural world. In the realm of physics, mathematical models and equations serve as powerful tools for making predictions and testing the validity of theories. They enable us to make quantitative predictions about the behavior of physical systems and compare these predictions with experimental observations. If the predictions match the experimental results, it provides strong evidence in support of the underlying theory. Mr. Einstein, what were some of the major scientific collaborations and discussions you had with other prominent scientists of your time, such as Niels Bohr or Max Planck? Collaborations and discussions with fellow scientists were an essential part of my scientific journey, and I had the privilege of engaging with some brilliant minds of my time, including Niels Bohr and Max Planck. One of the most notable collaborations I had was with Niels Bohr, a Danish physicist and a key figure in the development of quantum mechanics. We had a series of intense debates and discussions, particularly during the Fifth Solvay Conference in 1927. Our debates revolved around the nature of quantum mechanics and its implications for our understanding of the fundamental workings of the universe. I also had the privilege of working closely with Max Planck, a renowned German physicist considered the father of quantum theory. Planck's groundbreaking work on blackbody radiation and his introduction of the concept of quanta revolutionized our understanding of energy and matter at the microscopic level. I drew inspiration from Planck's work, particularly in the formulation of the theory of light quanta, photons, and its implications for the behavior of electromagnetic radiation. Can you describe the impact and reception of your groundbreaking paper on the photoelectric effect, which won you the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1921? My paper on the photoelectric effect, published in 1905, had a profound impact on our understanding of the interaction between light and matter. It laid the foundation for the development of quantum mechanics and brought significant advancements to the field of physics. The photoelectric effect refers to the phenomenon where light incident on a material surface can cause the ejection of electrons from that surface. In my paper, I propose that light energy is quantized into discrete packets, or quanta, which we now know as photons. These photons carry specific amounts of energy, and when they interact with electrons in the material, they can transfer their energy and cause the ejection of electrons. One of the most significant aspects of my paper was the recognition that the energy of the emitted electrons depended on the frequency, rather than the intensity, of the incident light. This was a departure from classical physics, which predicted that the energy of the ejected electrons would increase with the intensity of the light. The reception of my paper within the scientific community was initially mixed. Some scientists were skeptical of my radical ideas, especially the notion of light quanta or photons. The existence of these discrete energy packets challenged the prevailing wave theory of light and required a paradigm shift in our understanding of the nature of light. However, as further experiments and observations confirmed the predictions of my paper, the scientific community gradually embraced the revolutionary concept of photons and their role in the photoelectric effect. The experimental evidence, coupled with the mathematical framework provided by quantum mechanics, demonstrated the validity and predictive power of my theory. The impact of my paper extended beyond the photoelectric effect itself. 
It opened the door to a deeper understanding of the wave-particle duality of light and matter, and it provided the impetus for the development of quantum mechanics as a new framework for describing the behavior of particles at the microscopic level. How did you navigate the challenges of being a pacifist and a scientific genius during a time of world wars and global conflicts? Could you please share your experiences and insights on this matter? Certainly. Being a pacifist and a scientist during times of war and global conflicts posed significant challenges for me. As a firm believer in peace, I was deeply troubled by the destructive nature of warfare and the immense human suffering it caused. However, I also recognized the responsibility that came with my scientific knowledge and abilities. During World War I, I served as a scientific advisor in the German army, working on technical aspects of warfare. This decision was not an easy one for me, as it seemingly contradicted my pacifist beliefs. However, I believe that by participating in the war effort, I could potentially contribute to its swift resolution and help save lives. As the world plunged into the darkness of World War II, I witnessed the devastating consequences of scientific advancements being harnessed for destructive purposes. The emergence of nuclear weapons deeply troubled me, as I understood the immense power they held and the potential for catastrophic consequences. In light of these challenges, I actively advocated for peace and disarmament. I became involved in various pacifist movements, spoke out against the use of nuclear weapons, and urged world leaders to pursue diplomatic solutions instead of resorting to armed conflicts. I believed that humanity needed to find ways to resolve disputes and conflicts without resorting to violence. Can you share any personal anecdotes or reflections on your interactions with other notable figures of your time, such as Mahatma Gandhi or Charlie Chaplin? I had the privilege of meeting and interacting with several remarkable individuals during my lifetime, including Mahatma Gandhi and Charlie Chaplin. These encounters left a lasting impression on me. My meeting with Mahatma Gandhi in 1931 was a truly memorable experience. Gandhi was a towering figure in the realm of nonviolent resistance and a proponent of peaceful solutions to conflicts. We engaged in a deep conversation about our shared values of pacifism and the power of individual actions to bring about social change. I admired Gandhi's unwavering commitment to nonviolence, and our exchange of ideas reaffirmed my own beliefs in the pursuit of peace and justice. Charlie Chaplin, on the other hand, was a beloved figure in the entertainment industry and a masterful comedian. I had the pleasure of meeting him on various occasions, and our conversations were always lively and filled with laughter. Chaplin possessed a unique ability to use humor to shed light on societal issues and challenge the status quo. Despite his fame and success, he remained down-to-earth and dedicated to using his platform for social causes. Our interactions served as a reminder that even in the face of adversity, humor and laughter can be powerful tools for bringing people together. Mr. Einstein, as we near the end of our interview, we would like to ask you about your hopes for your legacy. Looking back on your life and contributions to science, how do you hope to be remembered, and what would you consider your greatest legacy? Reflecting on my life's work, I hope to be remembered as someone who pushed the boundaries of human understanding and challenged the established norms of scientific thought. My greatest desire is for people to remember me as a curious and relentless seeker of knowledge, someone who was not afraid to question conventional wisdom and explore the mysteries of the universe. If I were to identify my greatest legacy, it would undoubtedly be the theory of relativity. This theory fundamentally reshaped our understanding of space, time, and gravity. It revolutionized the field of physics and provided a new framework for comprehending the cosmos. The equations I formulated continue to be used as the foundation for further scientific discoveries and technological advancements. However, I also hope to be remembered for my commitment to social and political causes. I was a staunch advocate for pacifism, human rights, and the pursuit of global harmony. My belief in the power of education and intellectual curiosity to transform society is something I hold dear. I would like to be remembered as an individual who used his platform and influence to promote peace, justice, and the betterment of humanity as a whole. Ultimately, 
I hope that my contributions, both in the realm of science and as a proponent of social change, inspire future generations to question, explore, and seek knowledge. I want people to embrace the idea that anyone, regardless of their background, can make a meaningful impact through curiosity, perseverance, and a dedication to the pursuit of truth. Mr. Einstein, our audience is curious to know if you experienced any moments of doubt or uncertainty during your scientific journey. Could you share any such moments and how you managed to overcome them? Like any scientist, I encountered moments of doubt and uncertainty throughout my scientific journey. One significant period of doubt arose during the development of the theory of general relativity. As I worked on formulating the theory, I faced immense challenges in reconciling the mathematics with the physical reality of the universe. The equations I derived were complex, and their implications were profound. I questioned whether my assumptions and calculations were accurate and whether the theory would stand up to rigorous scrutiny. During those moments of uncertainty, I turned to a combination of perseverance, collaboration, and self-reflection. I sought the advice and expertise of fellow scientists and engaged in intense discussions and debates. These interactions allowed me to test and refine my ideas, gaining valuable insights and feedback. I also relied on my intuition and creativity to explore alternative approaches and perspectives. I would often retreat into periods of deep contemplation and thought experiments, allowing my mind to wander freely and explore different possibilities. This introspection and reflection helped me overcome doubts and find new paths forward. Furthermore, I recognized the importance of empirical evidence and observational data in validating my theories. I conducted experiments and sought experimental results that could support or challenge my ideas. This combination of theoretical exploration and empirical validation allowed me to gain confidence in my theories and overcome moments of doubt. In retrospect, I believe that doubt and uncertainty are natural and even essential aspects of the scientific process. They push us to question assumptions, challenge existing knowledge, and strive for deeper understanding. It is through overcoming these moments of uncertainty that we make significant breakthroughs and advance our understanding of the world. Mr. Einstein, as we near the end of our interview, we would like to ask for your advice. What guidance would you give to someone who is aspiring to make a significant impact in the field of science or any other endeavor? My advice would be to embrace curiosity and never stop questioning. Curiosity is the driving force behind scientific discovery and innovation. It is through questioning the world around us that we uncover new ideas, challenge existing knowledge, and push the boundaries of understanding. Additionally, perseverance is vital. The path to success is rarely smooth, and setbacks and obstacles are inevitable. But with determination and a willingness to learn from failures, one can overcome challenges and achieve great things. Collaboration is another key aspect. Science is a collective endeavor, and collaborating with others allows for the exchange of ideas, diverse perspectives, and shared insights. By working together, we can tackle complex problems and make significant advancements. I also encourage individuals to embrace creativity and think beyond the boundaries of convention. Breakthroughs often come from unconventional thinking and approaching problems from new angles. Don't be afraid to challenge established norms and explore uncharted territories. Lastly, a commitment to lifelong learning is essential. The pursuit of knowledge should be a continuous journey. Stay open-minded, read widely, and stay informed about the latest developments in your field. Embrace the joy of discovery and never stop seeking new knowledge. Remember, the pursuit of knowledge and making a meaningful impact requires dedication, hard work, and a genuine passion for your chosen field. So, follow your interests, stay curious, and let your enthusiasm drive you toward making a difference in the world. As we conclude our interview with Albert Einstein, we express our sincere gratitude for his insights, and the inspiration he continues to provide. Join us next time for another captivating episode of our podcast. This has been an interview with Albert Einstein. I'm Dev, signing off.